Welcome to Bishop's Court in Sale in the Diocese of Gippsland, on lands of which the Barakalung clan of the Gunai Kurnai peoples are the traditional custodians, and we acknowledge their elders, past and present, and pay our respects to any First Nations people who may be watching. This is a great season of hope and promise in the calendar, and yet we know that Christmas can be a very difficult time for those who might be experiencing grief or loss or who may be separated from loved ones. Not that families are always perfect, of course. Jesus' own extended family is a great example. Before he gets to his account of Jesus' birth, Matthew gives us a snapshot of Jesus' family tree, all the way back through King David to Father Abraham and beyond. Joseph was of King David's line, which is why he and Mary end up in the city of David, Bethlehem, when the census is taken in Luke's account. What's really interesting in Matthew, I think, are some of the people mentioned alongside the heroes in Jesus' ancestry. Yes, there are the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the kings like King David and King Solomon, the priests like Zadok and his line. But there are also four women mentioned by Matthew, unusual in itself in those days, but not just any four and not the four that we might expect, such as the wives of the patriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca or Rachel. No, we get these four names. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. Unlucky in love, Tamar got herself in the family way by tricking her father-in-law who had treated her poorly. Not the ideal way to continue the family line. Rahab was a foreigner and a lady of the night who helped out some Israelite spies. An interesting inclusion in Jesus' lineage. Ruth was another outsider and from Moab, which is a bit like being a Carlton supporter at a Collingwood home game. Not exactly a welcome or likely addition to a good Jewish family tree, and yet she is the grandmother of King David. And speaking of the great king, the mother of his son Solomon gets a Guernsey, Bathsheba. David takes a fancy to this wife of Uriah and then has him disposed of on the battlefield so that he can marry her. Talk about skeletons in the family closet. So why does Matthew include these four women? And what has that to say to us this Christmas? How might Jesus' backstory, as it were, with all of its twists and turns, speak into our stories. I think Matthew gives us the warts and all version of Jesus' stock to make a very important point to his first readers, some of whom thought of themselves as children of Abraham because they were born into the right families and had the right bloodlines. Matthew is saying, look at Jesus' own heritage, not so squeaky clean. And this one he calls Emmanuel, God with us, is with us in all of the dysfunction, the abuse, the exclusion, and the right royal stuff-ups of our own lives and histories. Jesus is not helicoptered into the human race without having to brush up against its brokenness. No, he gets here the hard way and inherits his share of baggage, just like the rest of us. And yet in baptism, we are joined to this family, not because of who we are or where we're from or what we've done, but simply because God is with us and God is for us in this one who was born to Mary and Joseph of David's wobbly line. Israel's great king who had that outside a Ruth for a granny and was distantly related to Rahab, who we don't really talk about, and Tamar, poor damaged soul that she was. So, 
Have a blessed Christmas with the ones you love just as they are and who love you just as you are. Rejoicing in the good news that God loves us just as we are and as we are becoming. And please, go gently and safely as we move into a new year of grace together.